And I'm sure Kyle doesn't have his dice. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Tuesday night. You know what that means. Uh, welcome aboard. Murder Hobo Inc. presents Between the Rolls, our talk show, which is highbrow entertainment and filled with a bevy of important information that you may need when you play D and D. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want cool stuff like uh, the rainbow shirt, which I'm wearing tonight. Uh, it's down there. Uh, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to chat with us on our Discord channel, it's down there. Uh, most importantly, if you want to have a seat either here on the talk show or on one of our one shots, let us know. M Hobo Inc. Either at Twitter. Or at Gmail. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. We don't need dice today, so I don't have anything to hold up other than oh, the beauty of it all. I'm always right. <laughs> there you go. I'm yeah. still waiting for my poop dog dice. Yeah. We're working on this. <laughs> Wait, well, yeah, she, she's got two full sets of molds now. We'll get those off to you. <laughs> Uh, and don't forget about oddfishgames.com, Oddfish Games. Uh, they have three offerings uh, at Gen Con two of which are full. One of them is running out of seats. So if you don't have anything to do with Saturday at 4 p.m. or you want to make time, uh, Saturday at 4 p.m., uh, get into the GenCon.com slash online and search for Sphinx, and they will teach you how to RPG with your cat. Uh, they do have a few seats, but they are going fast. So chop, chop. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about Barbarians. First, we'll go over and discuss what we had to offer this past week. Spoiler alert, all three fucking hilarious. Uh, but first, <laughs> let's meet the cast. We will start off with Carol. Carol, who are you? And who are you? Wow, I get to go first. Hi, everyone. I'm Carol. I'm a commission mini painter, longtime gamer, sometime GM. Uh, and oh my God, I had so much fun on the campaign this weekend. So I can't wait till we talk about that for obvious reasons. If you saw it. If you didn't go watch it, it was awesome. You might cut Frank, out. Frank, you think you're muted or something? Yes, I was. <laughs> my, my bony hip hit it. Uh, so am I now your fourth favorite DM? Moving up the ladder slowly. You're, oh, you're way, yeah, you know, you've always been fairly high up there in the list of the many, many. Because there's people. not a lot of DMs that'll do it. <laughs> you know, so I've had, I've had a lot. I've been playing for 30 years. I've had a lot of GMs. You know, you know what? Know. Next time I send you dice, I'll include some chapstick. Yeah, ask kisser. <laughs> Next up is Kyle, since he just put something in his mouth. <laughs> oh, no, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I was just here uh, sampling some new drugs I bought down the street. Very nice. <laughs> and uh, Very colorful. I'm... <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> what is, what scent is it? I, I forgot. Which I one did he get? get what sewer. did you get, I did, I did not get the sewer. <laughs> I did not get the sewer. Which one is that? I got mine in Temple. So. My bony I... elbow uh, got me that time. I, I smell this scent of, of wood, uh, 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 of the outdoors, um, and fish. So I think it's their new smell, Hepatitis Carol's Fence Post. <laughs> <laughs> How did I get dragged into this? Nice. You assume it's all about all you. about you. <laughs> it wasn't you. You're not the Carol they were referring to. Episode, I know it's not about me. I just thought it was Buddy, you did pick that name. Someone picked the name. Who Carol Spence Post. It was probably Carol, I imagine. Probably. Yeah. So she I sent me an email and said, "Hey, since I'm not going to be on the show tonight, Kyle, you need to name something after me." <laughs> I was like, "All right, Hepatitis Carol's Fence Post." Which set was that? Uh, that was. Uh, <laughs> The ancient library. So, if I were to actually take a smell again, oh perfect for Dewey Do Docamel. It is perfect for Dewey Docamel. Whenever I uh, am getting ready to play Dewey Docamel, I just pour out a little line and <laughs> <laughs> E equals MC square. 
I'll go ahead and say for adventure sense purposes that they are not to be ingested not or yeah, they're not to be ingested. And no. you know, I don't actually suggest shoving this up your nose and smelling it either. They are strong. Yeah. But <laughs> that resealable package that they come with will keep that thing uh, pretty good for a couple months. And mm -hmm. very well labeled too. Huh? Ancient <laughs> library. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> On to There's David. Also David. The other one. Yeah. David, did I really send you the Mayan temple? You did. Son of a bitch. That was supposed to go to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. People to send. She didn't send me one. Uh, what did you get in your packet? Now, who, what number DM is Frank now? That, that might have been Frank. <laughs> He's thinking, not low enough that you got sued. So. I thought you well, were going to be one in the packet. In, in my defense, I didn't get them until after I sent your packet out. In my defense, also, I I knew Kyle was the pitch man for oddfishgames.com, so he got two of them. David was going to get rooked, or whoever was going to be David, because we had a player drop out and David jumped on it, was yeah. going to get one of them. And then the guys in Ohio going into the Mayan temple here, maybe next weekend, I thought that would help them. Instead, we, we I must have sent a fucking city street or something. Because <laughs> I said it was something, but I don't remember what it is. David, city street. David, tell us it a little bit about yourself. like rubber. <laughs> okay, now, David, you can nice, tell us about nice. yourself, David. Hi, I'm David. I'm usually a guest here on Between the Rolls. I play in the Thursday shows, usually uh, on Cacophony. And Joe. What yeah. what do you think it is like a campaign or something? It's no, a soap. Oh, it's, it's totally a soap opera. Now, I don't know. That's pretty shit. Days like, in cacophony, like sands through the hourglass. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, so I'm usually on there, or sometimes the one shots for the murder hobos. So an excellent segue and because of it we are going to delve right into our review of episode 128 uh tentatively Perform. called performance problems david you played in it give us the uh, overview yes, I did i did play in it and like you disclaimed yourself i do not have that problem <laughs> <laughs> I rewatched oh, no. the episode. <laughs> I watched I uh, rewatched the episode right before the show. So it was funny as, as hell. But uh yeah, so this episode, Mortimer is missing. <clears throat> so uh as our intrepid young adventurers get a banging on their bungalow door from uh our guildmaster from under D's nuts and hit and his uh I guess. Rusted sidekick Fauntleroy. There we go. Sidekick Fauntleroy. <laughs> uh, frantic uh, barge in and making sure that we're all accounted for and then asks, where's Mortimer? Is Mortimer here? Then we just determine Mortimer is missing. So, so we get assigned with the task to find Mortimer and bring him back to safety here at the Guild Hall. So. Wait, wait, he didn't do it himself? Like he ended up in another time period or something? See, that's Maybe if you would have watched. Do it. <laughs> no, no, that's just me being snarky, okay? Yeah, I do have some questions about that, though. But... It would have blown him off. I would have oh. been like, just went back in time again. <laughs> thing, really. And then it would have. needs three whole... people to help him do that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Watch Come an on. episode. <laughs> no, that's... no, I know. Actually, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> So, investigating the city, our three adventurers, uh, Camille, Zadar, and Daphne, from the previous episode, are searching for Mortimer. Uh, we, we start uh, ascending our way into the market area, and uh, we're accosted by a wooden object bouncing off the walls and falling down the stairs. Uh, turns out, as it lands at Daphne's feet, we look at it is a wooden head and it is of Mortimer J. Sneed with the word <laughs> with his last name Sneed car carved in the forehead. So so we take up this uh, this object and <laughs> proceed to the the marketplace to try to find this out. We run into a little kid who said the head was his. Can he have it back and all that? You'll see that kid again because you promised him the head. Yeah. Well, it's con well, we'll get to that. Anyway, <laughs> he may end up walking with the whole statue. So, <laughs> so, 
So anyway, uh, our intrepid young adventurers, uh, as we start investigating the market, uh, we notice that there are there is a fair or a carnival like going on. And as we try to make our way into the, the marketplace, we get stopped by a gentleman in a robe, a uh, colorful robe, and um, uh, tells us that there is a price of admission, so many silver pieces to get in. Camille has a problem with that. <laughs> and uh, refers to his ticket agent who's in this dark alley. So right away, we know this isn't going to fly. Camille ends up accosting the, the, the ticket taker, and it turns out they are monks in disguise from the Ta Moon Order. So, Yatcha! and if you saw the previous <laughs> between the roles, it was all about monks. So, weave together, folks. Nicely done. So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> So a fight ensues uh, between, uh, what, at least four monks, I believe? Three. Three. Uh, control there were so many flurries of blows that there you just were couldn't keep track. Fists flying everywhere. <laughs> so after a series of control spells or whatever, we managed to dispatch the monks. Of course, the guards run up. You know, want to know what the hell is going on. You know, we, we're just like, it's okay. We're in the guild, you know. So we proceed with our investigation. That's, up, that, that's adventurer privilege right there. That is. Folks. Guild. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we end up uh, going into the marketplace where there is the carnival. Or I guess you would call it that. <laughs> it is like kind of like an outdoor circus going on. Uh, performers, we start to notice that... You know, some of these performers are not legit about what they are. Strong man, you know, weight seen a little ice. off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crab lady, prosthetics look really bad. Uh, then we find we find uh, a child in the, in the audience trying to either rob or cop a feel on Daphne. The jury's out on that one. Uh we question him. He informs us that uh, when we show him the, the head and we're like, we're looking for this person, says, yes, it was part of the act from the magician. And um, he got his head cut off. And, you know, of course, you I'm know. sensing a theme to this week. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you'll find out when carol or kyle does the next episode the next part of this show anyway uh the uh the kid informs us that there's a magician the magician turned him into uh, a statue or he had turned into a statue when he was placed in a guillotine as part of the act cut the head off and next thing you know there's just a wooden body of mortimer so uh so we question the magician she in turn says, I have something from you. We still don't know, determine where this was. She sets up a spell with a bowler hat, casts it, giant wooden rabbit construct comes out, roll initiative. <laughs> We're fighting for that. So nice. after we, we, we Stomp fight off the, the rabbit. the shit out of them. Yeah, we got, we, we got hurt pretty bad with that. Uh, anyway, after that encounter with the rabbit, we uh, find out that the the person who had taken the body for, for Mortimer, because Zadar was adamant about finding the body, we had the head, uh, was taken to a bar. Somebody was using it as like their uh, cigar store, <laughs> you know, statue uh, out front at the bar, but this was at the bar. So we go into the bar, inquire about the statues, get accosted. <laughs> It was the accused, folks. If you've seen awful. that Jodie Foster movie, it was awful. God, hairy fast. <laughs> Zadar goes all honey bunny and pumpkin on on the bar, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, we exit the bar with the statue after we had mended the head on top of it, you know, and log carrying it out of the <laughs> out of the bar. And ducking into the house of repute right across the street. So we go there. Zadar overpaid for a presidential suite there. 
<laughs> Apparently, oh, money comments. money <laughs> has the money is no issue for Zadar. <laughs> Overpays for it. There was there was a plan about it, but anyway, we get the presidential suite as we're getting in. We hear uh, the sounds of a beating and not the good kind coming from the room across the hall. Domestic violence. <laughs> yes. So we investigate. I think what we pick the lock to go in. No, we knocked. We knocked several times. Several times. Ernie was apparently in there. Eventually, <laughs> cop knocking. <laughs> No crossovers. And next thing you know, uh, the door opens. We go inside, and then all hell breaks loose. Because they uh, walk in blindly, dumb shits. Blindly, <laughs> we find we. That's, that's <laughs> our true. producer is just like I crawled in. <laughs> so anyway, we uh, we enter the room. There's Mortimer beaten in a chair. Uh, I don't think he got to tell us behind you or anything like that. Door slammed shut. Camille gets hit in the ass with a dart. Uh, That's such a trap. Fury of blows start start coming out, and it and it's the it's the 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 monk. Uh, it is like the lead assassin, and uh, yeah, she's gunning for us. So there was a contract not only out on Mortimer but for us too. Any associates? So since we're there to rescue them, we're fair game. Anyway, think, think about that one, Carol and Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I am thinking about. Well, you know what? There's the death snail and Garrett the alligator. <laughs> I'm sure the gnome's fine. I forgot his name. Oh, actually, that's right. I think I remember. Dibble when... Thibbet. Dibble Thibbet. Dibble Thibbet. Delivery service. You dibble Thibbet it. We deliver, we deliver it. Deliver it. it. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I think I do remember in one of the previous episodes, had to be at least two episodes ago, where it was mentioned about contracts being taken out on people who were involved in this whole mess. So I was thinking that was hmm, the Dibble Thibbet episode. Is gonna, when is this going to bite our collective ass? Of course, of the course, answer to that like, was last Thursday. <laughs> last Thursday, it bit us in the ass. You so, anyway, what? to get out of the 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 situation that we were in, Zadar didn't have very many spell slots left. He had one, so he casts... And the meat shield was down. And the meat shield was down, which our paladin has really got to learn how to be a paladin <laughs> anyway. Yeah. She goes down, Zadar uh, instinctively gets... Yeah. <laughs> Charms the monk. Wow. Uh, yeah. Charms the monk. A monk failed a wisdom save. Imagine that. Anyway, Charms the monk kind of takes things a little too far with the uh, seduction and the uh, interrogation, which in this climate might be bad. But anyway. If, if you want to file a complaint, please email it to my personal email, kissmyass uh, at <laughs> prodigy.net. So anyway, Zadar ends up binding the the uh, the monk. Uh, Mortimer comes out from uh, av after he had previously ducked under the the bed or the couch or something. Comes out with a bag and he's just like, "Let's flee! All the answers are in here." So we leave. I mean, we just Mortimer just Steed once again saves the day. He does. <laughs> he does. Wait, 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 wait. Mortimer J. Sneed. Yes. Of yes, the Academy. Yes. The Grand on Academy, yes. Grand Academy. On sabbatical. <laughs> he is currently on sabbatical. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And it may forever be on sabbatical. I don't think he's ever going back. No crossovers. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, with no, the no, item... I've been thinking of that, but you're right. Uh, I don't know what time period that the cacophony stories are going on versus the campaign anyway. Oh, so no, you don't. You do not. So, I mean, I assume they're not... <laughs> Time As you start your day in cacophony, you see a black cloud descending on the city. <laughs> Undead are walking the streets. Dogs and cats living together. Living together, yes. Hysteria. Uh, as it turns out in Mortimer's bag of secrets, uh, there's scroll tubes and things like that, as well as payment to the assassin. Uh, one of the <laughs> scroll tubes, we read the scroll. It is a contract. We come to find out that the person behind the contract is a crime boss, the crime boss, uh, by the last name of DeLuca. So How do you know it's his last name? DeLuca. It could be no. the first name, folks. We don't. But anyway, one of the things that's scary is that as we were leaving and we get 
uh, our way back to the the adventurers hall. Yeah, the sounds of the monk breaking free. Get out. Yes, there's going to be a reoccurring. <laughs> That Zadar either has a payback. fatal attraction or a monk with a vendetta. So it's just could go either way, folks. <laughs> yeah, and you were a female in that episode. I was a female in that episode. So oh, our next episode up is uh, with Kyle and Carol. It was the campaign and it was entitled <laughs> Yikes in Yaddle. Uh, it's a good one. <laughs> it, it, it was adequate uh who wants i would to spell pour? yaddle a different way personally it so wait, it's on all the maps that way <laughs> <laughs> do you want to start this uh, shit show or should i i would have did it with the these end of the like shit <laughs> show last time with the uh, uh characters all together once again uh, save for Prudence, who is off doing her own secret adventure at this yes. point in time. For man, for ah, Rock. damn it. You know what? You get him confused. <laughs> he always picks a P name and then he lays it out. It's like, oh, I wouldn't think it was prudent of me to do that. Or, yeah, oh, indeed. this seems like a perpetual thing. And I'm like, oh, damn you and your wordplay, Blake. <laughs> Delectious, yeah, delectable. But the genius is it. here, you know. So. <laughs> Uh, but we have all caught up together and uh, have decided that uh, Dewey is right. Dewey is amazing. Let's go help Dewey find his father figure. Yeah, but there's also that, or there's also the part of the magic item that we need. It's also in the same place in the catacombs below the city. Well, Dewey but thinks you're being nice. So we went to the good. shrine of Ickis where we have both attempted to dig out uh, into the catacombs as well as figure out what's going on with Alvin Knackle. I don't well, know shit. It's not just Alvin Knackle. It's a, we, yes, I, that is part of the mystery. That's the uh, but mystery. also to find out what, we also went there because we were directed to because there was some damage caused at, uh, at the temple. And I believe someone got killed, right? Frank? The grand priest was buried no that no not that episode no not the, the somebody else got killed didn't they or was all that the same person innocent bystander number three was killed if i do remember steve i believe who that was <laughs> yeah yeah no uh, his poor wife stavetov will uh probably end up on the streets and die lonely hungry and full of syphilis or hepatitis c right or, you know, uh, she probably died when Taryn uh, uh, told a bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> no, I cast it. No, vicious, vicious mockery. Yeah, exactly. So it can be a bad joke, too. So uh, the party ended up trying to dig their way into the catacombs to gain favor of the Icarus Acolytes. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, Icarus, Icarus. <laughs> I think yeah. someone said Icarus at the very beginning, and I literally <laughs> changed my yeah. notes. I was like, oh, you're too close to the sun. What are you the, the, about? These guys don't actually watch the fucking show. They just kind of go. No, why would we watch the show? We're here. We're, we're in, in the moment. Uh, we do terrible, <laughs> awful things. Like uh, when something big is happening in the city, we ignore it and continue to dig. Well, <laughs> Carol, what happened after that? Well, one of the things that we found out too is that the perpetrators used acid in this attack and there was a lot of damage. Um, basically the trapdoor we need to get to that leads to the catacombs is underneath a pile of rocks, which is why you're trying to clear them up. I want, you know, so all of a sudden everybody starts running to the docks and we're like, hmm, what's going on? And totally blew the fucking thing off. Yeah, well, that's because we have more pressing business in the, and I was hoping maybe. You know what? I think that was a perfect opportunity to split the party no. in a productive way because honestly, the diggers are just going to dig a hole and someone else can get some story related information. Well, but no. Truth, no, but we, we got all the information anyways <laughs> after the fact. got to consider that. And I think actually, the way that that played out, I think actually was better. Other than the fact that we would have been friggin' way more horrified if I found out by going down there. But I think it actually... What I happened? 
plague. What happened? So plague? plague? No, that doesn't make sense. What happened? I said plague. What happened? What happened to the docs, Carol? You're gonna stop talking over me so I can say I'm it? not talking over you, Carol. I'm asking what happened. I'm getting <laughs> the ball rolling, Carol. You've essentially <laughs> repeated what I said, but you took ten times longer. <laughs> <laughs> I love my players. <laughs> <laughs> we love each other too. But yes. Uh, uh, what, see, now, where the hell was that? You friggin' interrupted me. So you, you didn't go left. down to the dock. You got approached by individuals of mm -hmm. civilian kind. I remember. Ran away I kicking and screaming from you. So, no, wait, 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 wait. But basically, I did not want to go down to the dock because I wanted to find <laughs> another way into the catacombs because. Okay, so it's going to be, it's going to require bureaucracy and, you know, we have to actually get permission to go down there. And I was hoping maybe we could find a way to get down there while everybody was at the docks and no one was watching us. That's what I was hoping that didn't happen. So everybody starts coming back up and the party sits there and discusses who are we sending outside to go talk to people. And of course they sent me because let's face it, I'm not very good at lifting rocks and I am, I've got good social skills. It was close, though. You guys almost fair, really I did volunteer to me. go out. So, and Frank Mima was praying that it was going to be me for a reason. So I walk outside, and then the first two groupy people just basically look at me, scream, and run away. And I'm like, okay. Because it, all I knew at this point, a ship from Fulton had pulled into port. That's all we knew. And, and of course, Fulton is, is where Taryn's from. And she's like thinking, I don't know. No, I don't know why they'd be afraid of me unless maybe they found out my past. I don't know. Uh, to find out, <clears throat> thank you, Frank, is, this is great. Uh, a while ago, I put in an email, and this had nothing to do with my backstory, but I did mention Taryn had, has a identical twin evil sister. And I'm thinking, well, the whole evil twin trope has been kind of overdone, but what the hell, I'll mention it, because it's also a character I do play in a it, it'll be an upcoming one shot. Um, so. Or not. Rang it. No, as far as I know, we're still all going for that. Yeah, no, I'm still playing her, that she's part of the Hand of Bane. Uh, so to find out her identical twin sister, who's a pirate and apparently an admiral, which I had to try to figure out how you could be a pirate in the military. But. I'm guessing she was a pirate before. So I'm working on those details. As I'm trying to, I came up with a bit of a backstory so I could play off of from now on. Cause this was a surprise and it was a great surprise. Uh, so that threw me the pirate and an admiral at the same time. But regardless, um, it'll work. Uh, she basically beheaded a bunch of gnomes, correct? Uh, actually, it was a mixed bag of uh, racial individuals because we don't see race here at Murder Hobo Inc. We'll kill anything, anything, yes. puppies, but, children, but wait, Frank, lords and ladies, wives. <laughs> they are members. They are members of the group that's that Dewey works against that are trying to destroy information, right? Nope. You do not know that. Plus, there was a silver dragonborn in there that you have met before. Right. right. And we, yeah. No, Rumors of a dark elf surfaced. Pretty I much I, everybody. That, <laughs> I think I knew who the dark elf is. Um, I believe they were uh, around about once or twice. Once. So, so now that I know, everybody thinks that for somehow. I can apparently be in two places at once, or I can get from the docks to the temple faster than everybody else because everybody thought I was my sister uh, who brutally beheaded a bunch of spies or people she deemed spies with, and I do remember this because how could I forget a freaking like uh, wire <laughs> right across you know, over the water to just dump everything in the water. I'm like, that's lovely, Frank. You're really good at coming well, up. It keeps the dock and the deck clean. That's yeah. right. There are dark places, very dark places that you do not want to tread. So I'm like, oh, well, shit. This is <laughs> so I cast the sky self and walk inside the temple and go, all right, no, I didn't. No, I had to cast 
ask this guy self sorry before I get anyone to talk to me because everybody's friggin' freaking out. All right, so, real quick to answer yeah. one of your questions on how you can be in two places at the same time and completely sure. dress differently, disguise self. But I also don't look like me either. I mean, you change your face and everything else. You change your race. Regardless. <laughs> it's too hard to get from the docks to where I was before all those people were running away screaming. But it still was a great drop and it was a great surprise. It was a fun surprise. And then I go and we, I tell you guys, and oh, what the frick happened at that point? Um, I remember we ended up, we ended up, Oh, we ended up coming out and I talked to one of the Yaddle generals. I can't remember her freaking name right now. Ah. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't give you a name. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you did. I thought she had a name. All right, that's my mistake. Uh, <laughs> so, of course, Taryn is an honest person and she oh, will. Oh, Lacey Cagney. Mm -hmm. Lacey, yeah, that's right. It was Lacey Cagney. I love that. I knew I liked that name. Um, <clears throat> Taryn, as we all know, if you watch campaign, Taryn is a rather honest person and she will use the truth to her advantage and not live. She thinks that if getting caught in it will mean things will go downhill. So she fully admitted they came into the city and were looking for this, you know, this magic item to help save the world. Uh, she bought it and she didn't seem to care much that we had, were not citizens and that some got in the city. But Lucas was all worried about it, so he kind of disappeared. And he went back to the inn he was staying at. Uh, while well, the rest of us nice. were escorted to a different inn uh, because I was going to cause too much trouble by wearing the face of this pirate. And there's also, there was a demand too put on the Yodel authorities to surrender their, uh, was it their Navy essentially? Yes. Their boats. Uh, so there's all that going on. So we anyways, of course, Dewey sits there and says out loud, so everybody in the, everybody who's lurking about could hear where we were going to stay. To be which, fair, Kyle did that. That's okay, And Kyle. super channel Dewey in that moment as well. You know what, Kyle? It was perfect. I, it, it, in Story-wise, it was fantastic. And it led yeah, to no. what happened. I mean, I wasn't bribed to throw the party under the bus or anything. You weren't oh, anyway. Oh, yeah, adventure sense. <sighs> oh, here's the oh don't lick the bag. Don't lick the bag. Out. Oh. oh, I taste these city streets. Oh, asphalt, <laughs> rubber. Ah, ah, ah. Do you want to pick it up from here? Do I want to pick it up from here? I can pick it up from here. Yeah. So What's Dewey up? does a wonderful job shouting out so that uh, Lucas knows where we're going to be at, as well as everyone else in the. Quitting the cult of Sethua. Oh, I'm going to kill you for interrupting me, Carol. <laughs> Taryn, dead next time. Whatever. So we get to our hotel. Taryn is uh, under house arrest and can't leave. We get some delicious grilled cheese and French onion soups. Which oh, are mighty fine and delicious. And we proceeded to eat and then go to sleep, paranoid that someone might be watching us. And we knew, they were. knew. I saw them. We knew someone was watching yeah. us. We, you came back. They went three directions. Oh, I was going to kill at least three of them before they and ran off. They were from the cult of Central, who is if also only the DM was going to let us fight that night. You know, uh, it was just like a missed opportunity. No. Yeah, I was a dick. Uh, you know well, luckily, uh, uh, people were on watch and uh, ropes were tied off for quick escapes. And then the entire building was set on fire. Luckily, there were heroes in the building Jesus. and everybody was saved. No one else, no innocents died except for bystanders one, two, seven, and eight. <laughs> we actually don't know. And 23 and know. 24 mm -hmm. and 97. 16. 97 was a surprise. 16 died too? I love 16. 16 died. And 18 he was the was one who made the French onion soup. Correct. I actually have no idea how many people died, but we did get out about seven of them. And one we had to go rescue out of his room. Because 
Dewey went running back, back in. And it was like, wow, that's... that's Under good. the bus you go. Under the bus. Uh, folks, that is Yikes and Yaddle. Uh, real quick, uh, the third offering was the Margu campaign, Eli Toran. Uh, that group is currently moving about through the capital city of the Tabaxi. Don't mention that to Carol. She hates them. Uh, tabaxi Jungle. Uh, if you really want a good feel for that show, go to the show. It's in the archive. Uh, and go right around 110 in the archive. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not real sure how much I chopped off at the beginning, uh, but about 113 to 122, uh, the group meets Phineas Lautrec, a new NPC and a standard, typical Frank Adventures in Philbar asshole NPC. <laughs> uh, and he goes to town on all but one of the PCs who falls in love with him. <laughs> so uh, uh, Phineas is going to be that guy that you cannot kill because you need him. Uh, but right around uh, 115, Mark, uh, Phineas goes into high gear and there is some true feelings uh, from the rest of the group. All three of these are in the archive. I did botch Saturday's show and got it in the archive late. For some reason, it didn't go in when I sent it. Uh, but all three are in the archive. Uh, a couple of them are still on Twitch. Uh, take a look at it. hope you enjoy it. And if you want to see it in any one of those, not the campaigns or, or the soap opera. So, you know, anything other than Anything that. else. Well, yeah, to be yeah. fair, if uh, Carol is uh, lined up for cacophony the soap opera you can slip right in and shove her to the side that's right you can bump her because we <laughs> you people get bumped. That, <laughs> uh but yeah take a look at those uh and now we will move on to our main you know topic. what hold on guys look at carol she's starting to turn a little bit red her temper's starting to flare her up carol what would you like to do uh, nothing. Wow, I fucking handed it to her. You handed it to her. She didn't it. take Mine's it. She didn't red. deliver. Oh, do I look red? I can see myself on, you know. Yes, you're very red and red. spongy. <laughs> I think she's green with envy. <laughs> uh, next topic, main topic, uh, the final class. Uh, so now we have to come up and figure out new shit to do. On oh, did you do the artific artificer yet? We aren't doing that bullshit oh, character. And not the psionics I, either? Come on. No, oh, come uh, you on, know what? I, I'll give you the ar uh, the artificer. Fucking Sonics <laughs> ruined D&D. <D &D. laughs> Screw that bullshit. That has no place on this show. Uh, let's talk about the Barbarian. It should be easy because People who play barbarians are dumb. With the exception wait, of wait, wait, slow down a little bit. I missed, I know, I covered we, that we, missed it. we totally missed it. Uh, as with the others, we got a lot of archetypes. Uh, each one of our players here enjoys playing a specific type. Uh, we started with David. Or they just ended with Carol and Kyle, so fuck it. David, uh, give us the uh, brief overview on what your favorite is and why. Mm, okay. <laughs> My favorite. Good enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. Next. I'm done. Next. No, no, I want to hear. What you, wait, what's your favorite? Uh, my favorite's the Battle Rager. So uh, I actually created a character. We've played it uh, on the show. Uh, Battle Ragers are um, a race lock class uh, without, but you, if, any other race wants to play it you need permission from your dm but uh it's primarily i mean it's always dwarves <laughs> and uh the battle rangers are uh they're berserker type barbarians uh their <laughs> their names are actually called uh the cool jar which translates into dwarvish as axe idiots so <laughs> they're not very bright Intelligence is always a dumb stat on a barbarian. Uh, anyway, uh, they have their place in dwarven society and all that. They're, like they said, they, they kind of live on the fringes of dwar dwarven society. 
anyway, the thing about the Battle Rangers that sets them uh, apart from everybody else is they're one of the few barbarians that are actually allowed to wear armor. They wear armor that are covered in spikes. Um, the spike armor, you get that <laughs> at roughly about third level. Uh, once you acquire this, you can actually use your spiked armor on a bonus action as a melee attack. Uh, also, if you grapple using your armor, which barbarians are known to do, grapple, um, on a successful grapple, they'll take piercing damage too. So, yes, nice. yes. <laughs> so, the Battle Rager is great uh, at different levels. You get different abilities. Like, uh, for one, um, you, get, you get one that's like a charged. Uh, you get uh, reckless ab abandonment. Uh, you get spiked retribution, which is if anybody attacks you, they automatically take uh, damage. So it's uh, it's a great it's a great sl subclass. Tons of fun. I enjoyed playing it. You should give it a try, especially if you're partial to dwarves. I mean, yeah, who doesn't like dwarves? Dwarves are the greatest creatures ever. Of course, <laughs> except the producer. She hates dwarves. <laughs> so anyway that's the take on the battle ranger i highly recommend it tons of fun cool beans carol favorite barbarian type actually you know what i want to ask kyle because i know he's got two he's played and oh, I like i've played all of them battle ranger uh I, I take that back i don't do totem warrior because <clears throat> i don't like to i be don't the... want to steal yours so which one did you pick to to cover you cover your own, Carol, and I'll make any added addition Corrections. to what you have. <laughs> <laughs> I've only have seventeen for David, but you know. Okay, so the one. Okay, so the one now actually tranks. I have a barbarian character I rolled up. <laughs> it was for an old cobalt game that didn't happen, but I haven't yet to play it. Um, but I. Said she was going to be a swobold. A what? Oh yeah, Swole balls, get it. <laughs> so, but one of the ones now. So, the, my experience, my exposure to barbarians has been based off basically stuff Kyle has played and Critical Role. And but the one, the one that really impressed me a lot was your the uh, ancestor one. Yeah, the ancestral guardian, because that friggin' the, the protector. Holy. Friggin' crap! That was that was amazing. Because was it they 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 not only caused your the opponent that you you're supposed to hit your opponent. I didn't recall you hit the dragon, but regardless, um, oh, I did to save you. Oh yes, butt. you did. You did. You did. No, but continue. Was, but the first thing you hit these uh, these ancestral protectors will come down and you'll they'll they'll basically you sick them on that first thing you hit. And they have disadvantage to hit, to, to, to attack rolls. And remember, the other big thing was they uh, have damage. <laughs> they, uh, the, yeah, they have all, they have their damage. I don't know if it's all just, um, I have the thin notes here. But I just <laughs> remember that. And that friggin' thing saved my character's neck. And I'm like, wow, that is ridiculously powerful uh, to be able to, to do that basically make everybody else like a raging barbarian because one of the cool things about barbarian even though they don't wear armor you do of course get a big bonus based on your dexterity plus 10 that's your armor class but you also when you're raging you also and con. physical attacks are half con. you know it's amazing that dewey died a couple sessions ago <laughs> because holy mackerel the G at Frank had to go get it had to be a ton of damage hit against him because he has pretty much all that physical damage. And that's that to me they are they are the absolute fantastic tanks of, of the probably one of the best tanks we have. And with the ancestral uh, version, holy crap, you know, that they, they even have it further. It's that is great. and then you're protecting everybody else too. So that is that's nuts. And I, I really, really am impressed with that particular uh, primal path for a barbarian. So that's mine. 
They also like Zealot too. So I wasn't sure if you picked oh, Zealot. Now we're going to talk about the one, uh, the second, my backup one, in case you stole Ancestral Guardians. <laughs> okay, Carol, tell us I, about the Zealot. I asked you. <laughs> and I'm then Priscilla to tell us about that. All over <laughs> it. <laughs> Which one do you want? Okay, I'll do all of yours. <laughs> that, that's for always talking over. Uh, it, you know what? I give her the opportunity to go uninterrupted and look what she does. This is why we have to we rein in Carol is the honesty. You know, this is why I asked before. Anyway, so about the barbarians. Barbarians, of course, are it's one of so the sick. tanks and major damage dealers. Um, I mean, there's two ways that you tank in Dungeons and Dragons. One being is that you are scary, you hit people, and because you hit people hard, they have to attention uh, focus on you. The other is that uh, you also uh can take the damage or you can avoid the damage in the barbarian's case you take the damage with the resistance um depending on what kind of barbarian you are uh if you are the totem warrior bear for example which is always a fan favorite you get to resist everything when you rage except psychic but honestly that's magic. just their one ear and out the other anyway hey, you can't resist magic or like fire? Bear, totem, it... barbarian. All right, all right. Uh, yeah. Stop thinking about what you want to say, Carol, and listen to what I have to say, then respond to that. I am listening. <laughs> uh, but anyway, one of my favorite parts of any D&D &D thing is to try and flip something on its head. And as such, uh, uh, I've taken a enjoyment to the zealot barbarian as well as the Ancestral Guardian Barbarian. Carol has pointed out that the Ancestral Guardian, uh, uh, the last one I played, wasn't a Barbarian, but a Shaman. Oh, uh, it was, but it has that same ability, right? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, I just call him a Shaman because he speaks with the dead ancestors, uh, and he hates Mama Udu, so, you know, voodoo Who does it? Shaman... <laughs> Obviously, right? Give do and udu. Wouldn't <laughs> give do also a totem warrior? Uh, I had a level of that in him too, called the ancestors or something. Give. No, yeah, the the one with Captain Karash, that that little guy. Yeah, so that's the, the one. That's the I, one honestly, I don't. He know. Does, he has so many characters. He there can't are so many. They are them. written down somewhere. I mean, welcome <laughs> to my world. <laughs> I mean, probably, of course, my favorite uh, 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 of, oh, yeah, Jub Jub. I like Jub Jub. Jub Jub's good. Uh, but uh, uh, the ancestral guardian that uh, everyone enjoys, Chad Dunwagon of the yes. East Farthing Dunwagons. Yes. Who uh, totally turned the barbarian on his head by not wanting to fight at all, but rather just. Spend you money spending. to lead you alone. Oh, take this and go away. I hated Chad. But of course, <laughs> if you wouldn't go away, he would throw a tantrum and call his daddy to help him. Who was the ancestral guardians in that situation? Oh, cool. oh absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, we come on to the zealot barbarians. Dewey Docamel is that. And... Now, I mentioned it in the email, but we have to talk about this love for tiny barbarians. They're everywhere. <laughs> Goblin barbarians, halfling barbarians, kobold dwarves. I mean, sure, they're medium, but let's be honest. You say that so they don't give you a hug, poke a bunch of holes in you. They're small. They're small. Uh, uh, they're like prison shankers. They're prison shankers, really, essentially. Uh, but Dewey Docamel is another one of those barbarians who I wanted to turn on the head, an intelligent, 16 intelligent barbarian, none of the charisma, but he knows a lot of things about book and he could easily become the, uh, the muscle wizard if he had to be. Um, but with that one, uh, with Zealot Barbarian, that is where a god, goddess, um, maybe even a force of nature chooses you to be the um, chosen warrior of the force of good or evil or neutrality and as such you can just 
fight on and on and on, and you can be killed and brought back to life without much fuss. As long as the spell slot is there, you don't need the diamonds. Uh, and eventually, uh, do get to the point where he just cannot die as long as he's angry. Um, but we're not telling anyone else in the party that because Dewey is going to be the big bad evil guy at the end of it and kill everyone. <laughs> but General Zio, General Io's brother, twice what removed. What did you know Pat. about? That. <laughs> he is an orphan. <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, with the Celt barbarian, I like the idea that you know this barbarian rage can be forced on someone. Uh, you know, with Dewey, it was um, the knowledge cleric, but also the danger damage uh, uh, goddess, and that was her showing through that. Um, I have Farvik the White, uh, a white chromatic dragon who is normally a fighter, but Tiamat takes a special interest in him, and he becomes a barbarian who rages, taking on feral uh, white dragonness. Um, but um, what else to say about barbarians other than you rage and you attack recklessly, especially if you decided to buy into the trope and you're a small barbarian because you have to crit if you want to do a lot of damage. A small <laughs> barbarian. You know what? Bringing that up, you know who was a perfect barbarian? No. Conan the Destroyer. Sure. Grace Jones. Yes. Yes, Grace Jones. Yep. I'm gonna nod like my head, like I'm not young enough, and I'm. How, really how do you oh, not see God. that movie, Conan? I it's not Conan the even Barbarian. Grace Jones. No, is. Conan I don't know the who Destroyer. Grace Destroyer. Oh wait, Conan the Destroyer. Which one's Conan the Destroyer? Second movie. Second. Yeah. Not the one. With Where Jason. was the Thunderdome? <laughs> that was Mel Gibson as the Road <laughs> Warrior. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, let's Re be fair. He's probably a barbarian too. I mean. Mel Gibson in that Rogue. cop movie. He's crazy. That could be a barbarian rage, you know? That eh, could be. Could be. Uh, anyway, hey, you know watch, what? Watch don't Conan stereotype. Don't stereotype barbarians. They don't have to be shirtless idiots. They could be smart no. and cunning. They could be rich noble who throws tantrum. It could be a little girl whose imaginary friend is going to tear you to little pieces. Uh, it could be a cursed <laughs> baby doll. Watch uh, Conan yeah. the Destroyer. <laughs> Grace Jones actually, I think, portrays the little person, uh, except for her issue with rats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she is an ass kicker, but not don't with don't mice. put a rat around her. <laughs> she doesn't like that. Uh, okay, since we're running short on time, let's go to uh, last section. Uh, give me a scenario with a pack of barbarians or a single barbarian. We'll start with Carol this time. All right. So I actually thought of this, but you know, once again, it could be your end goal could be for either. It just depends on what you throw at, you know, how many things you throw at him. I was thinking of a hunt. Um, going some, there's a monster or, or a creature that's terrorizing their tribe. So, so they Beowulf? Have, essentially, something along those lines. Maybe like a rite of uh, adulthood, whatever you call yeah, those? That would be good for solo, but this could work for either. It really could work for either. Sure. You know, it said, you're right. You could do a rite of passage for, for a solo adventure, or is it, or it could be something that's terrorizing uh, the tribes, either your tribe or a nearby tribe that's asked for help. I think that, that that would work pretty well. Is it Christopher Columbus? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little soon. Uh, that's yeah, fair. Yeah. Uh, David, uh, solo or group? What's your theory? Solo. <laughs> Barbarian with a couple of levels of bard. Bardbarian. Oh, God. There was. Uh, yep. yep. Oh, yeah. I went there, folks. Uh, <laughs> No, basically, uh, I looked in D&D &D Wiki. Uh, apparently, one of the theory crafting thing is a scald. Uh, yeah. Scald is, you know, the, the Nordic uh, uh, chanter and things for uh, nomadic tribes. So I think someone like that, a collector of lore, would kind of give uh, latitude to traveling to different places, looking for tales, stories, songs of grandeur and heroic battles and things like that. So that's thinking, my concept. 
Are you thinking Floki from Vikings? Could Being be. smart. Oh, he would. That would be. Yeah, that'd be. A great oh yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. He's not really a bard though, but yeah, I like the bard idea. I'm just having a hard time figuring out who would be a <laughs> bard. But, but, bard. But he definitely was very flashy. You, if anything, unless they had, I'm trying to remember if they had any scalds on on Vikings. I don't know. Uh, the, the blind old man wasn't he a scald? Seer maybe. Yeah. Seer? Oh, I didn't. Did he bang on drums and start chanting and getting people like ah oh, worked up? He was touchy. He was a kind of touchy guy. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna have if to you're keep listening, Chris show. Perkins or Jeremy Crawford, scald. You know, subclass yeah. for barbarian. Yeah, I, 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 I think the DMs Guild put out a Xanathar's. Guide to everything like lost a supplement. notes. Yeah. And that has a scald in it. Uh yeah. pure bard though. Um Kyle, it's up to you. Yeah, I know. See, I, I kinda want to do either a solo and uh heavily rip off the movie Mortal Kombat. Uh, <laughs> doing oh. plenty of fighting, but you could also, you know, be smart about it and everything, or or Put that noble in a, a political party and uh, <laughs> that's a terrible idea. Okay. Um, yeah, gosh, no, actually you guys really hit it on the head with the <laughs> hunting party with, you know, trying to track down something that's a little bit uh, beyond or, you know, getting that rite of passage to adulthood or with David's, which was really good. And I honestly I remember all of it. I just want to say that you put me on the spot and I forgot yours. Sorry David. about Sorry. it. I got one for you, Kyle. Though. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hit me up another one. Arena battles, gladiator, yeah. gladiators versus barbarian. Ooh, no, do the movie gladiator. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hey, he was more of a paladin though. How about, how about Conan? Yeah, why not? I've CD never seen that movie, so not even the <laughs> shitty remakes. No, I've oh okay. How shitty about remakes? What? Yeah, have now, you not seen I, the now shitty Thunderdome? Remakes? Great, I loved Conan in that one. How about the Scorpion King series? Oh, okay, Scorpion. Yeah, King. there you go. And, and series. You can, there were three of them. There were three. No, of them? actually, I think there were five. I think there were five, five of them. But the yeah, Rock was only in stuff. two, I think. I think those are the two I've seen. <laughs> but uh, who was the guy that was in the Green Mile? Brendan Fraser. No. Eric no, Coffey. No. Um, no. It was... Uh, Duncan, the guy that played Michael Coffey. Duncan? Michael Clark Duncan. Michael Duncan. Yeah, he's yeah. dead. But he... I, I, I see him. What? I see him <laughs> as the barbarian. The better barbarian out of uh, the two. Hey. Because he's he hit- wild, he tries to protect his tribe, uh, and he loves whooping ass. Rest mm-hmm. in peace, Michael Duncan. Sure. Yeah. You know, this brings up a point. There are tons of good resources to inspire a barbarian character. And actually, you know, like the Battle Rager really, really is written off of Quent Bibbledorf from the Bibbledorf Quent. I'm wow! Sorry. Great job. job, Carol. Great, great job. job, Carol. I'm I'm sorry, done. I love I, me some Thibbledorf. Who do you think Thibble Thibbet's named after? Yeah, no, I. It's been a long time since I read it. It's so much she is. Yeah. Through. How about uh, Eldabon? Uh, I know I'm fucking up that name. Uh, Moorcock's character, uh, not Drizzt, but the old, the other one. Oh, he, uh, the the assassin, Eldabon of yeah, the the dwarf. The, yeah, that goes with him. Yeah, it's this newer. I haven't read it. No, no this is old. this is Salvatore stuff. This is Brunor <laughs> Battlehammer, and you got Double Dwarf Quint. Is there another dwarf I'm missing? That's, that's the only one. Oh, I there was think. Belwick Disengulp, who was the dark gnome, deep gnome. Yeah. Who I would say ended up being more of a smart barbarian because he had the hammer hand and the pick hand. Just bam! Oh, awesome. It's Elric. 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 That's it. Elric of Meldabone. But That's I what I was thinking of. The ba- I'm talking about the. I was talking about specifically the Battle Rager, and I think it literally was written off that character. I can yes. see that. Oh yeah. 
Or, and who was uh, the king under the mountain's cousin? The redhead. Oh. Riding the pig. Oh. Iron oh, head. Was it something Iron like that. Yeah. Dane something or other. Wait. Are Dane, we doing. I, we are Lord talking about J.R. Tolkien. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who yeah, Dane, was the actor Dane. who played him? Oh gosh! It was like um, Billy O'Connolly or something. Billy, like that. Billy, yeah, yeah. yeah from, Billy uh, played him. Boondock yeah. Saints. Yeah. Yes, yes. Billy Connolly played him. You know, I was watching something, was and he gave the best, uh, best advice for a barbarian, and it was when he was learning how to fight like a dwarf. The guy was like, "All right, just remember one, three, <laughs> one, three. <laughs> Where's two? Oh, two is where he hits you." <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's that, awesome. That, that is Pretty. clever. And that's a barbarian for you. Pretty much. Good night, what? folks. That's 901. We're out of here. <laughs> well, wait, Any last thoughts? I Carol. Say, my, my last thought will be you know, one of the other examples I just thought of are the, the wildlings in uh, Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice <laughs> touch. Look at the guy, the guy character's his name, but he has. The red hair too. What is it about red hair? Short. Uh, My hair. favorite line from Game of Thrones is they were when they were trying to get them back on the other side of the wall and all that. What about our ancestors and all that? Fuck them. They're dead. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But uh, barbarian. So you know what? Well, final thought. Barbarians. Um, boy, I tell you, they said I want to try everything. But barbarians would definitely sit with the whole. I, I love the thought of yeah, just standing up there without armor and taking a beating and being able to protect my party, uh, and dishing back that beating just as much, if not more. That's 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 a great. I play I play barbarians in other systems and I enjoy it. So I know I would enjoy a, a five. Yeah, I will say five e barbarian. Yeah, that yeah, resistance is really yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, now, go there, ahead. Are, there are other subclasses we didn't cover tonight, uh, but check them all out. Uh, there's Path of the Beast. There's um, there's the Wild Soul. Check them out. It's UA. They're awesome. So. Is that your final thought? That's my final thought. <laughs> Kyle, final thought. Final thoughts. Barbarians are great. You know, sometimes when you're trying to figure out your character, don't be like, yeah, no, the barbarian's not sophisticated enough for that. Always keep the barbarian in mind. <laughs> A party can always use seven barbarians in it. And a healer. Uh, no, no, no. A healer. Uh, healer. Called resistance. Uh, the magnificent <laughs> seven <laughs> barbarians. There we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Folks, uh, there you go. These guys love barbarians as a DM. Fuck those guys. Make them go <laughs> reckless so that you can attack with advantage on them. And hit them before they go ape shit because then they really take all the damage. That's my advice. <laughs> yeah. If you can get them before they get Frank, you, those guys are squishy. Hey, Frank, or throw spell casters at them because they don't have that damage. Yeah, that's it's true. Only, it's only physical. It's only physical. It's a physical beating. Unless you're a bear. Unless that's, you're a bear, and then you're fine. bears fucking kill people. I'm always a bear. <laughs> and by the way, the reason why I went after Dewey in the burning building is it's like fire. He is not resistant to fire, and he may not be raging. So that's why I went because I'm like I can heal. So that was Andy my asses. <laughs> uh, <laughs> folks, ch check out our three episodes. Uh, honestly. They were extremely fun, all three of them. Uh, but yeah, catch uh, Phineas Latrec. That motherfucker is going to be a thorn in their side for the next five, six sessions because I am going to play a dick. <laughs> uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our stuff, it's down there. If you want to join us in Discord, it's down there. If you want to see on this show or one of our one shots, uh, M Hobo Inc., Twitter gmail this week uh no soap opera cacophony uh not sure about sunday yet but friday and saturday uh david and carol will be joining us for gen con we have triton's crown the fourth level on friday 
We have Asimov's Visive on Saturday. That's Urban. That is in Cathaway. I'm not saying that uh, there's going to be anybody famous there, but there probably might be. Are they being wait wait? Are they being broadcast? They are being broadcast. Everybody yeah. has checked in, and uh, there have been nobody that says they don't want to be famous on TV. So we will be broadcasting both of those shows. Also, don't forget oddfishgames.com. They still have a few seats left for their uh, Sphinx game, where you can RPG with your cat. Bring your cat along, because uh, Tabaxi uh, love Carol. That's all I'm saying. For everybody here at Murder Hobo Inc., including the Tabaxi Racist Carol, thanks for joining us. Wash <laughs> your hands, cover your mouth when you cough, and we will see you at Gen Con Friday night, 8 p.m. Oh, there you go.